Hi, welcome to the Games Planner. I'm Jeff the Games Planner, and today I'm Games Planning the Red Cathedral. So the Red Cathedral plays from one to four players. I don't do one player, so I'm not going to talk about that. As a two player game, it sits fine on the table. As a four player game, it sits fine on the table. Uh, either player count, any player count, really seems to work really well. The whole idea is that there is a cathedral. A cathedral with a whole bunch of different towers and you need to build those towers. Once you've built those towers you get to uh, get all the the benefit from each card and you flip the card over leaving your marker there to say you were the one responsible for the building of that particular tower or at least that card of that tower. At the end of the game you're adding up all the points that are on the card so there's two points per card and then there's some extra little things that can be added to a tower by anyone and they add another point. So there's there's a potential large number of points in a tower on at least a tall tower, not a whole bunch of points in the smaller one. Then the person who has a majority of the points gets all of those points. The person who has the second majority gets half of that, third majority half of that again. You can see where we're going. There's a, it's a really funky little mechanism of scoring. It, it, it kind of makes you start thinking, especially as you get towards the end of the game, okay, who's, who's going to get so many points on this tower? If I add this one thing, will that push me to having more points or will that not push me to having more points but give someone else more points? Because obviously the less stuff you have in a tower, the less points you get. Or is there a tower where there is only one player? Could I add something that will just give one point to that tower, but that will gain me half of the points of that whole tower? And, and, and these thoughts are really what make the game. I did find that each time I've played it, the game has kind of come to an end almost abruptly. The game finishes when you've got one of the players has all their markers up on those towers and those parts of towers have been built. As soon as that happens, the game's pretty much done. And so the it, it's kind of like I'm going through some motions to do stuff. I can gain some resources down here. Uh, I can do some other stuff here. But I realistically, that's your goal. That's the thing you're working on. And so working towards each of those elements and, and kind of putting the resources onto those cards to be able to turn them over is actually really where the game is at and and finding ways to actually manipulate that and make points out of that so so important in everything that that, that you're doing there's a funky little um way to move around the board in terms of the scoring because there's scoring for um crosses or crucifixes that and that's just like small movement and then there's small uh, scoring for the actual score symbol, which early on in the game can be quite large movement. When you get further around the board, they become every every spot, and so the kind of everything kind of catches up to itself. The little crucifix movement has absolutely nothing to do with the game other than just kind of pushing forward. So if you get enough crucifixes, you'll get another point. At the end of the game, you pull back to the last point marker, and we go from there. And and then you're just moving one, 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 one. And it's, it's, it's an interesting look on the game. It's an interesting kind of thought process that goes into it that you really want to gain those crucifixes later in the game once you've moved along a bit. But in order to move along a bit, it's actually quite difficult uh, to get the points that will move you along a bit early in the game. And so there's kind of this struggle of, oh, I want to not be there anymore. I want to be up further. But... To get there, I'm going to have to just go really little, 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 little points. Uh, so there's a, there's an awful lot to think about this with this game. I find that it sits nicely on the table. It looks comfortable and, and everything plays really nicely. Um, but there's just that oh, crunch going on that stops you from, from being able to move. And that's probably a really good thing. Um, the one the one drawback on this one is that it feels like like as you're playing it, especially early game, it feels like a much larger game than it is. And then when you get to later in the game, it can close off very very quickly um, once people realise oh this is how to finish the game. And that crunch and that that 
way to kind of think about it is really what it comes down to. So I'll leave it there. Please go ahead and watch my games play and games explanation to get a feel for how the game actually plays and all the rules. If you have any games that you would like to be game explained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games that I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm game explaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.